Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are taking a step into Night City as we look at PC performance in Cyberpunk 2077 with a focus on ray tracing and DLSS. Now, I don't think this game really needs much of an introduction as I'm sure many of you have been playing it since release, but it is built on CD Projekt Red's latest iteration of their Red engine, and honestly I have to say this has to be one of the most visually impressive titles to come out over the last year or two. Breaking down this video then, first we're going to take a look at general performance, testing the latest Ampere and RDNA 2 GPUs, and then we're also going to look at all the ray tracing modes this game has to offer, and how they affect performance. We will also do the same for the various DLSS modes in this game. All of our testing was done using version 1.03 of the game, so that is with the day one patch installed. And of course, we are using the latest game-ready drivers from both NVIDIA and AMD. We're also using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. And this consists of an i9-10900K running at 5.1GHz across all cores, with an Asus ROG Maximus 12 motherboard, and we also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory running at 3600MHz. Cyberpunk does include an absolute ton of different graphical options, but there are also four quick presets, so you've got low, medium, high and ultra. As we are testing the latest Ampere and RDNA 2 GPUs, we went for the ultra preset, so you can take this as a worst case scenario. The benchmark sequence we're using today takes place at the end of the rescue mission, which is at the beginning of the game. This is a scripted sequence as V and Jackie are driving home, and while I did look at producing a custom benchmark run, I found the game is quite dynamic with its NPCs and cars appearing in some runs but not others, so I found this was the best sequence for consistency. Based on the two hours I've played through so far as well, the frame rates are representative of wider gameplay. Kicking off the benchmarks with 1080p then, we can see this game is punishing. Starting at the bottom, the RTX 3060 Ti averaged 80 FPS, which is well below the average frame rate we saw from that GPU in our recent review. At the top, RTX 3090 averaged 124 FPS, so it's 9% faster than the RX 6900 XT, but we can also observe an interesting trend when looking at the AMD GPU. In fact, all three AMD cards we tested demonstrated worse 1% lows than their Nvidia counterparts. The RX 6800, for instance, hit the same 92 FPS average figure as the RTX 3070, but its 1% lows were 20% worse. I can't honestly say it made the game feel noticeably choppier, but the frame times coming in are clearly worse, and hopefully this is something that can just be resolved with a driver or game update. As for 1440p then, here things do begin to struggle. Usually we'd expect this caliber of GPU to breeze through 1440p, but if you want to hold above 60 FPS at all times, an RTX 3080 is required. The RX 6800 XT and RX 6800 did average above 60 FPS, but the 1% lows were down in the low 50s. We can also see the 6900 XT was about equal to the RTX 3080, but again it's let down by the 1% lows, which were 10% behind the 3080. The top dog, meanwhile, RTX 3090, averaged 85 FPS. And to put that into perspective, for our GPU reviews, we test 14 games, and the average frame rate for the 3090 across all 14 games is 144 FPS. So you can see how demanding this game is against the average figure. Lastly, we come to 4K Ultra Performance. Here, I think you can just forget about 60 FPS at native 4K, with only the 6900 XT, RTX 3080, and RTX 3090 managing to keep the 1% lows above 30 FPS. DLSS really is needed for a smoother 4K experience if you don't want to sacrifice image quality. Speaking of sacrificing image quality, there is a fair amount of performance to be gained from lowering the presets. We tested this at 1440p with the RTX 3090 and saw a 20% gain when dropping from ultra to high. Going from high to medium is a 21% boost, and then dropping down to low nets a further 20% compared to medium. To put that into perspective, the low preset runs 73% better than the ultra preset. So 
So that is it for our look at the general performance, but I really do want to focus more on the ray tracing. Ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077 is very, very demanding. And to prove that, we tested our four Ampere GPUs with the Ultra Ray Tracing preset. At 1080p, the RTX 3090 sees its frame rate effectively halved, and it's a similar story for all the other GPUs, with 50 to 52% performance hits common among the 3060 Ti, the 3070, and the 3080. At 1440p, that scaling is pretty consistent, but of course the frame rates are even lower here. So at best, we're looking at an average of 42 FPS for the RTX 3090. The 3060 Ti also sees a 55% hit to performance, dropping down from 51 FPS without ray tracing to just 23 FPS. We did also test 4K, but suffice to say, with ray tracing quality set to ultra, at native 4K, it's just not realistic on even the RTX 3090. Let's take a closer look at those ray trace settings though and see what's what, as we do want to dive deeper than just looking at the ultra preset. Cyberpunk actually includes five different ray trace effects. We have shadows and reflections, which have their own toggle within the settings mode, but then there's also a lighting option, which includes ray trace global illumination, ray traced ambient occlusion, and also ray traced diffuse lighting. This lighting setting can either be set at medium, ultra, or psycho. Now, we will look at the visual differences of these settings in just a moment. But first, let's see the performance hit from each individual setting. Here, we have included the ray tracing presets at the bottom as a point of reference, compared to ray tracing disabled at the top of the chart. Starting off with reflections then, this setting alone dropped performance by 29%, from 85 FPS with ray tracing off down to 60 FPS, and this is all done at 1440p. Ray trace shadows, meanwhile, are less demanding, and we have seen this from a number of titles, but that still dropped frame rates by 20% when turned on by itself. As for the lighting settings, pushing this to Psycho is clearly highly intensive, resulting in a 48% reduction in frame rate. The Ultra setting drops frame rates by 38%, and then we see a 31% performance hit when using the medium setting. And as a reminder, the Ultra Ray Tracing preset as a whole reduces performance by 51%. There's clearly no doubt then that even when benchmarked individually, these Ray Trace settings are expensive for the GPU. But the question really is, are they worth it? In my opinion, the answer is a yes, but also a no and I'll explain what I mean. Starting off with the ray trace shadows, in my opinion, these just aren't worth the hit to frame rates. For sure, they can look softer or sharper than the standard shadows, depending on the lighting conditions, and you get a clearer outline of V in this example, especially around the hands and the head. It's noticeable if you go looking for it, but in my opinion, I don't think the ray trace shadows are a game changer, and personally, I'd rather keep the ray tracing off and gain back that 20% hit that we saw when enabling it. I'd argue something similar for the lighting effect as well, which includes global illumination and diffuse lighting. Again, you can see differences here. The diffuse lighting makes neon sides look a bit more vibrant, like they're really glowing. The global illumination can also change how some parts of a scene are lit, based on where the sun is. Like the tree in this example, where it's much darker with global illumination on due to the sun being directly above it. In my opinion, the ray trace lighting setting can make a scene look different, but I wouldn't argue that necessarily means it looks better. And for me, the visual impact just isn't profound enough or appealing enough to lose at least 30% in performance. However, and this is a very significant however, in my opinion, the ray trace reflections in Cyberpunk 2077 are a proper game changer, and I don't use those words lightly. Similar to what we saw in Watch Dogs Legion, a city like this really is the perfect use case for ray trace reflections, as they're basically everywhere, and for me, they are just transformative. Seeing neon signs illuminated in puddles, Seeing the surroundings accurately reflected on glass buildings instead of a flat looking blur. The skyline on top of the rivers surrounding the night city 
It is just phenomenal and I honestly really wouldn't want to play the game without these reflections turned on. For me, it just changes how the game feels as a whole. It makes Night City feel even more alive and dynamic than it does already, with the standard screen space reflections just feeling dull and flat in comparison. Of course, those ray trace reflections, as good looking as they are, do still come with a performance hit. Based on our testing, that is 29%. But that is where DLSS comes in. Cyberpunk offers four DLSS settings, from quality to balanced to performance, and then ultra performance. Each uses a slightly lower internal rendering resolution as you move from quality down to ultra performance. By now we have seen a few titles utilize DLSS 2.0 very well and Cyberpunk is up there with the best in my opinion. Looking at the quality and balance DLSS modes, I really am struggling to spot the difference between those and native resolution. DLSS can even sometimes help bring out fine objects which native resolution misses, like these pipes in the background. The actual quality of Jackie's face in this scene though does look identical to me. It really is very hard to spot the difference between either balance or quality modes compared to native resolution, so that alone is very impressive stuff. I would advise sticking to those balance or quality modes though, as performance and ultra performance can start to look a little soft depending on the scene. I also saw some artifacting on edges or fine lines in these modes, while neon lights also appeared to flicker when using the ultra performance mode. Thankfully though, DLSS brings a significant boost to frame rate, even when using the quality mode. There we saw a 44% boost to performance going from native 1440p with ray tracing off, compared to DLSS quality mode again with ray tracing off. If you do use quality mode in conjunction with ray tracing though, the benefit is even greater with frame rates improving from 42 FPS to 69 FPS, which is a 64% improvement. Balance mode meanwhile enables a performance boost of 59% compared to native resolution when ray tracing isn't enabled, but if you do set ray tracing to ultra, this works out as a 90% performance improvement. In my opinion, DLSS simply put is a must have in this game. If you're playing without ray tracing, it simply nets you extra smoothness, which is very much needed considering how demanding this title is, but it can also be the difference between a playable and unplayable experience if you have ray tracing enabled. With all that said then, this is how I am going to be playing the game. I'm going to stick to the Ultra preset just because it looks fantastic. I'm also going to be enabling DLSS quality mode and I'm only going to be enabling those ray trace reflections, keeping shadows and the general lighting effect firmly turned off. In my testing, using those settings gives performance which is actually fractionally better than native 1440p with no ray tracing. But the key thing is the visuals are absolutely transformed thanks to the use of those ray trace reflections. Using DLSS quality mode also nets us an extra 47% performance compared to native 1440p with ray trace reflections. We can also see that using just those reflections instead of the entire ultra ray tracing preset gains back another 28% performance. Overall then, I think it is pretty clear that Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most demanding titles to come out over the last year or two. The flip side is, if you have a GPU that is strong enough to handle it, it rewards you with a impressive, visually dense and detailed environment. I've only played a couple of hours, but I would have to say this has to be one of the best looking games I have ever played. In my opinion, those ray trace reflections are an absolute must in Cyberpunk they really do transform the way the entire city feels and it really does change the overall experience. Anyone with an RTX GPU as well definitely has to turn on DLSS as it really can provide a much needed boost to frame rates with very little in the way of image quality differences compared to native resolution. Of course, we haven't yet tested AMD GPUs for ray tracing in Cyberpunk purely because it's not currently supported. It will be fascinating to see how these AMD GPUs do compare to their NVIDIA counterparts when ray tracing is turned on 
especially because those AMD GPUs don't have the luxury of using DLSS. So stay tuned for that update and when we can finally test it. That is going to do it for this one though guys. So if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let me know your thoughts on the game and if you have an RTX GPU, have you been playing with ray tracing on? While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell, and you can also find a link to our Discord server in the description. You can also consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early, as well as get access to exclusive giveaways. That is it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic4KitGuru, and I'll see you in the next video.